Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan with One Big Impact, and welcome. And if this is your first time at our channel, please, please, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. So first of all, today's video is actually going to be something that came up recently. And Jennifer, don't kill me if I get anything <laughs> not up to your expectations. I know she's going to comment on this video. Just watch. Um, <laughs> but... Today's video is going to be something that comes up a lot, and I think it's probably something that we should cover, Keto versus Atkins. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, a lot of people are going to ask, well, what are the ratios of this? What are the ratios of that? So first of all, with keto, it's high fat, adequate protein, and low carb. And Atkins is high protein, moderate fat, I like to say it's high fat, but in 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 comparison with keto, it's not going to be. And then low carb. So both of them have a low carb approach, but uh, their fat and protein intakes are a little bit different. Now, as far as what they were originally designed for, um, as far as keto, keto was actually developed in the 1920s to be able to treat ep epilepsy in children. And Atkins was actually just a basic study by the gentleman. His name is Alfred Pennington with DuPont. And he just wanted to do a low carbohydrate study and did that. And then later on, Robert Atkins eventually adapted the idea and then started doing more research and brought us what we know today as Atkins. We'll cover keto first okay as you know i am not the keto guru necessarily i always always steered the other way but that doesn't necessarily mean a good thing or bad thing i'm just going to give you the facts and then at the end i'll give you my own personal opinion on everything so first of all i know with a higher fat diet meaning keto um, you will have a 30 percent 30% of people usually report that they have constipation issues, which is normal because you're consuming more fat, more dairies, more milks, um, things like that, as well as less fibrous vegetables. So you probably need to supplement some type of fiber. There has also been increased raised or heightened levels of cholesterol, but by altering the fat contents of your diet, that can be eliminate. Also, as opposed to the general public, one in 20, as opposed to one in several thousand people could experience kidney stones. The more times that this has been a problem in the past, as far as like kidney stones are concerned, that was when they were restricting water on the actual diet. So it's important that you get plenty of water intake, obviously with any any type of regimen that you're doing, water is going to be a major factor. Drink your damn water. Besides that, weight loss is actually just a side effect of keto, okay? It was designed initially to treat epilepsy and a wide array of different types of medical conditions. Now, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's just that by changing those macronutrients, you're actually just getting a side effect of being able to lose weight and then you go into a state of ketosis, which is good because then your body is naturally burning ketones and it learns how to effectively burn more fat rather than blur, uh, glycolysis, which is when it's burning more glucose or sugar and carbohydrates because you're restricting those two things. A big mistake that a lot of people tend to make on keto or Atkins or any type of healthy regimen is consistency. Um, uh, specifically with something like keto, it can take months to become a fat adapted or it can take weeks or there's not really any perfect time for everybody. But I will say consistency is the major factor. If you're going to take time out of your day or life or whatever to be able to follow call it, follow a ketogenic meal plan or diet you need to be consistent with it and it's important that you continue to learn the process specifically with ketogenic diets it can be really mentally 
stressful uh, for a lot of people to be able to meal prep or meal plan to be able to get or grasp the actual idea of a ketogenic diet understanding their macronutrients getting their fat contents right and it does take it's a learning process okay there's a lot more meal information out there um, it seems to be about Atkins and stuff like that but as far as um, finding out what works best for you on a ketogenic diet it's basically just fine-tuning it and over the process so it's more of a long-term process figuring out what works best for you because there's no phases um, there's not necessarily like inductions or phase one two three four like the uh, predecessor or would be Atkins it's going to be specifically pretty much the same thing but then fine-tuning it as you go along to meet your dietary goals or what you want to achieve now because it's not a balanced diet per se you know proper more proper amounts of carbs or proteins or whatever obviously that is going to be some government restriction or whatever that's up to complete debate that's not what we're here to do but according to being able to get those micronutrients like uh, vitamins minerals and stuff like that you do need to supplement some things and that'd be like calcium vitamin b vitamin d basically a multivitamin maybe like a calcium supplement would probably be perfectly fine it's just important that you realize hey uh, a lot of those vitamins, minerals that I may not be getting from um, certain types of vegetables and stuff like that, I just need to supplement them. So it's a pretty easy way to supplement, but you have to remember that. Initially, uh, keto does give you a lot more food options, so a lot of people like that. But in the same sense, I'll talk about the other side of that. <clears throat> um, decreased sugar levels, which is really, 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 really amazing. Um, any any diet as far as I'm concerned or way of eating uh, or lifestyle change that reduces the sugar intake or any type of sweets or anything like that is in my mind a huge win in, and it's just hitting the ball right out of the bar park. Um, the other the other thing is you're not going to get as much fiber like I said before you're not going to see um, as much bathroom action, which for a lot of people can be very discouraging. Um, so things that you can do to increase uh, going to the restroom or using the number two, basically pooping, okay, you go into poopy do, um, would be increase your fiber, um, do some like fiber supplements. Also, MCT oil is a really good favorite for a lot of people on the keto. Um, a keto diet so that can be really helpful as well as increasing your activity level and of course water um, because you don't want to dehydrate your body's going to just kind of lock up and stuff like that next we're going to talk about Atkins okay so here's Atkins um, we have had a long world history of quite the controversial past when it comes to Atkins okay you got like the 80s and 90s um, you had everybody was really scared of fat and foods and stuff like that and Robert Atkins kind of came along after being inspired by the World War II study of from Alfred Pen Pennington with DuPont he kind of latched on to that and wanted to do a little bit more and ended up finding out that low carb could be a really effective approach so basically he he started doing that um, it had a lot of controversy when he brought it out Obviously, everybody's like, oh, he died from this. Okay, dude, I don't care how healthy you are. You can die from heart disease. Did Robert Atkins die from heart disease? No. He died because he fell and smacked his head on the freaking ice. Okay? Do the research. Like, people, come on. It's not about, we're not, we're not trying to down anybody. Uh, you know, it's like saying, um football players or whatever don't die from heart attacks okay we die from all different types of reasons that's not that I just want to put that to rest hopefully but um, it was actually in 2003 2004 funny enough a little bit of history um, it in heightened it got a lot more momentum um, in 2003 2004 and it was actually funny enough blamed for the decline in high carbohydrate like pastas and rice apparently like eight to nine percent decline in sales for those items which is 
whatever. It's good in my book. I mean, de declined in profits, like, ooh, big shocker. I'm sure they were still making billions. But besides that, um, funny enough, the funny one is uh, Krispy Kreme apparently blamed um, decline in their sales. Faulty management. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But um, they declined uh, their sales as well and blamed it on a low carbohydrate or Atkins um, approach or whatever. So that's pretty funny. Um, its main focus has always been on weight loss. Okay, keto has always kind of now obviously it's gained momentum over the last with keto, um, but Atkins has always pretty much been focused on. Uh, weight loss and health benefits as far as like keto has always been pretty much epilepsy and other health benefits so <clears throat> two different uh, two totally different genres of um, keto was kind of like a side effect and they accidentally found it and then Atkins was kind of the approach the whole time um, but I'm sure it was probably a side effect of something else somewhere in history but from what we know um, today. Uh, the guidelines are easier to follow. It seems like a lot of people um, counting their carbohydrates and their net carbs and stuff like that, minusing the fiber and the sugar alcohols, which if you're not eating anything sweet, you're basically just got, grabbing your carbs, taking away the fiber, and then you got your net carbs and you just count those, keep them in induction 18 to 22 per day, um, and then you're usually pretty good. Roughly 20 is a good, if you want a number, um, but uh, you, you don't need to count calories, although that is not a reason or a license to be able to gorge yourself because in all actuality, um, it's important that you understand um, that's one of the myths, 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 I just got my braces tightened, I can't talk. <laughs> one of the misconceptions, there we go, misconceptions with Atkins is that you can literally eat as much food as you want. And you're good as long as you restrict carbs, and that's just not the truth. Because if you eat 5,000 calories of meat, you're not going to lose weight. It probably, I have no clue what would happen if you ate 5,000 calories of meat. You would probably get the shits, I would assume. But, I mean, if somebody wants to try that, go for it. Let me know what happens. I'm not suggesting it. <laughs> um, it reduces cholesterol. It can re reduce cholesterol, but in some people it can raise cholesterol. It completely depends on what you were eating before. Um, the other thing is uh, induction. Uh, keto doesn't really have an induction. Um, oh, another thing is keto a lot of the times is actually has been in history monitored by nutritionists, dietitians, doctors, and things like that. They a lot of the times they'll do inpatient. Um, inpatient, um, not induction, but like during the first few days or whatever, they keep you in the hospital and educate you on stuff on that. And then Atkins really never had that requirement. Um, but um, induction phase can really show a lot of people um, rapid weight loss, and that can be really good. You can be able to drop water and um, stuff like that really fast. Uh, but in the same sense, um, that mindset can really get a lot of people activated and say hey I just lost 20 pounds in a couple weeks I'm gonna keep going for this and overall that can just sustain um, you working towards a main goal over over continued time so uh, the strictness and food selections seem to with a lot of people keep temptation away okay and um, keto is going to be a lot less a lot less restrictive. But in my own personal opinion, uh, more restrictive is excuse me is better for me because if you're letting me eat um, you know uh, grains and um, fruits and stuff like that, I have a hard time controlling myself. If you say I can eat five berries, but I've got sixty berries in the fridge. I'm sorry, but I'm going to eat 60 berries, and then the next day I'm going to go get 60 more berries, and you know what happens? I eat 60 more berries. So <laughs> having Atkins um, being restrictive can be really helpful for a lot of people. Uh, like Atkins and keto are both decreased in sugar, which can be really good for health benefits. 
Um, your body is only supposed to be able to metabolism, metabolize about two teaspoons of sugar per day. So anything in excess of that is probably going to get metabolized as fat and then stored as fat if you're not using it as your primary energy source, which most of us probably aren't. That's why we end up uh, overweight. Um, phases actually help phases of Atkins. They have, they have induction, phase one, phase two, lifetime maintenance, and so on. Um, a lot of those can actually be really helpful because you are reincorporating a lot of foods and getting more steered towards a keto approach as far as like allowability as far as like the foods that you can consume and stuff. So that can actually help people understand slowly what their body responds to, what it responds positively and negatively to. So that is a good overview of both of them and now i'm going to give you my own personal opinion keto versus atkins the jonathan opinion uh, the jonathan opinion is that i think it's important that you do what you feel works best for you okay if you are a person that likes keto do keto if you're a person that like likes atkins please by all means do atkins do whatever you feel most comfortable. If you'd like to be less restrictive, maybe keto could be your approach. If you'd like to be more restrictive in the beginning to kind of change those bad eating habits and just poor, uh, poor choices and stuff like that, Atkins can be a really good approach for you. If you want to find out something right from the get-go and actually dive into it and have this approach pretty much for life, um, keto can be a really good option because you get those fundamentals and I'm going to tell you it's going to take a lot more research in the beginning rather than um, Atkins in the beginning because Atkins is pretty straightforward. I can tell you in about five seconds um, how to basically follow Atkins induction and keto is a little bit more information. I'm not saying that it's harder necessarily because once you get those fundamentals down of keto um, you can use them you know through time and then you just tweak slowly depending on um, what it is so uh, for me personally I lost 90 pounds using well about 85 86 pounds um, using Atkins and I feel that Atkins overall is a better approach if you're trying to lose weight fast um, but you have to be careful um, not to let that go to your head um, you have to go through the phases and you have to go through the phases or you have to basically flop into something new <laughs> flop in the bad choice of words um, if you're going from uh, Atkins induction and then you just fall apart you're going to gain all your weight back okay and if you're following keto and you're following keto and then you just fall apart you're gonna gain all your weight back okay I know keto is a slower way of losing weight but a lot of the times that can be really beneficial for people that want to sustain weight loss over time um, Atkins if you want to lose weight fast and then you know obviously work through it as you're going through the process and then go to the different phases slowly that may be your approach overall okay overall I know I've kind of blabbed a little bit overall I feel that Atkins keto modified Atkins glycemic low glycemic index diet um, or just overall a healthy lifestyle change. Watching your portions, keeping track of your calories, getting physically active, drinking plenty of water, and not gorging yourself all the time is probably going to be the best option. Okay, The best option is to watch what you're consuming. Okay, I don't care if you do Atkins, I don't care if you do Keto, I don't care what you do. The best thing you can do is just be careful about what you're putting in your body. Many people all day long don't necessarily follow Atkins, don't necessarily follow Keto, and they look great and feel great and they've lost weight. And the best approach for losing weight is sustaining your healthy lifestyle. Whether it's Atkins, whether it's Keto, 
whether no matter what it is, consistency is going to be the key. Don't think you're going to go into Atkins, lose 100 pounds, and then just go back to eating like crap. Because a lot of people think, I can lose all the weight, and then I can eat like crap again. Okay, so what got you here in the first place? You ate like crap, and it did not help you. Okay, so whatever approach got you to this video today wasn't working. Okay, so you have to remember that it's important that you sustain your healthy lifestyle. If you get to a point to where keto is no longer effective or you burnt out or Atkins is not working for you and you're starting to gain weight, you need to tweak things and move them around. You have to remember this is going to be a fight to the finish and the finish is the day you die, okay? And a healthy lifestyle is going to be a continued positive lifestyle change for yourself, for what works best for you. Okay, I will say a couple fundamentals. Eating right, getting activity, drinking lots of water, and following guidelines on portions and restricting sugary foods, sugary drinks, and stuff like that is going to be your overall best option for you. These Atkins approaches and keto approaches can be really good because they focus really well on good quality whole foods, which a lot of us have really never done. So that's my idea of keto versus Atkins. Which one's better? Neither. Neither of them are better. Both of them are amazing. Both are amazing and have shown people amazing results. I love the fact that you're here and you're looking towards being more positive about loving yourself enough to be healthy and make a healthy change for yourself. That's what's most important. You guys are amazing. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Obviously, like always, be stronger than your excuses and remember to spread love, not hate. That's really hard to point to that. Spread love, not hate. Be stronger than your excuses. Thank you guys and have a beautiful day. Please check us out if you're new here on our Facebook group. It's called Healthy Living for a Healthy Life. I will put the links in the description below. As always, I am an Amazon affiliate, so if you like our videos and I am giving you information that you use in your daily regimen, please check out our links in the description below to shop on Amazon. Thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful day. Peace.